and weigh 50 tons or more. No land animal today even comes close. The jaws of a T-Rex can leave a bite mark four feet long, and 12-inch teeth can penetrate deep into flesh. But every dinosaur, no matter how big or powerful, starts out small, very small. Oklahoma, 110 million years ago. A herd of Sauropocyte are on the moon. We're talking about an animal that was probably 80 or 90 feet long, and about 40 feet of that was just neck. So when it stuck its neck straight up, it could probably reach about 60 feet up in the air. These leviathans are making a journey to nesting sites they've used for generations. Developing inside them are hundreds of eggs. They're the future of a species that will be around for 15 million years, more than 75 times longer than modern humans have been on Earth. Yet each egg is no larger than a cantaloupe. I think it's a very beautiful idea that you have this little egg that's surprisingly small, and out of it comes a baby Sauropocyte that's about the size of a rabbit. And in two or three decades, it's going to be a 50-ton adult. But just why does this huge animal have such small eggs? Sauropocyte eggs, like all eggs, are honeycombed with tiny pores to let oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Bigger eggs need more air holes, but get too big and this tiny home collapses. That's why even today, no bird lays a larger egg than an ostrich, an egg weighing just over three pounds. Each female lays about 500 eggs a season. This sounds like the beginning of a sauropod population explosion, but it's not. The moment an egg hatches marks the beginning of a race for survival. A race virtually every one of them will lose. Being a hatchling, you don't have horns, you don't have plates, you don't, you don't have any kind of armor on the body. Practically anything could gobble it up. Thousands of defenseless hatchlings are let loose into a world of fierce predators. It's a brutal way to raise a family. Sauropods are just trying to flood the environment with babies, just in the hopes that a few survive. In the Cretaceous, plant eaters face vicious killers. And none has a worse reputation than Tyrannosaurus rex possibly the largest land predator that has ever lived. T-Rex is sort of the quintessential monster. A dinosaur with an attitude. A Tyrannosaurus rex can grow to 18 feet tall and over 40 feet long, with jaws designed to tear meat to shreds. This beast's reputation for violence and terror is unmatched. But a T-Rex comes into the world protected like few others in the Cretaceous. If you say Tyrannosaurus rex, I think of gentleness. I think of superb motherhood and a struggle to raise one's chicks. The dreaded Tyrannosaurus rex, it turns out, is one of the most nurturing of all dinosaur parents. It means taking care of the eggs, sticking around the nest, defending the nest, and keeping traffic track of its progress. Tyrannosaurus rex means tyrant lizard king. And this beast rules a world where physical traits more than intelligence determine winners and losers. But T-Rex has both, superb biomechanics and by dinosaur standards, a stellar intellect. It was the result of many, many millions of years of specialization for large body size, for focus on prey, for sensory apparatus, and for the ability to dispatch a large herbivore. With things like Tyrannosaurus rex, you have bigger brains, you have the option for more complex behaviors, especially when it comes to parental care. 
For three months, an adult delicately guards the nest to ensure the survival of their youngsters and the continuation of their genes. You've got to have somebody that's very, very attentive when these little things hatch. Inside the egg, the embryo breathes in oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide. The CO2 dissolves in fluid, making carbonic acid. Acid that slowly weakens the shell. Suddenly, something miraculous happens. A three-foot-long T-Rex chick breaks free. You can imagine T-Rex helping its young out of the shell, even with those big, giant jaws. The hatchling is tiny compared to its gigantic parents. And this heir to the T-Rex throne is immediately under threat. Tyrannosaurus Rex, when we think about it, we tend to think of the big adult, because that's the skeletons that we think, that we see. But we know that they didn't hatch that way. Once those eggs hatch, we've got an animal that's maybe you know, three feet long, maybe weighs about five, five to eight pounds. Comparing that to the adults, which might weigh as much as seven tons and be 40 feet in length, you know, how is this animal going to be careful to not step on these little little beasts, if, uh, uh, let alone try to protect them and try to make sure that they're going to be cared for? There's nothing fearsome about them. Sure, maybe someday they'll become a fearsome animal, but at that time, they're just a meatball on legs. Wherever this T-Rex looks, he stares danger in the face. There were crocodiles, medium, large, to gigantic, that could, could plop down, swallow baby T-Rexes like maraschino cherries. Clearly, a young T-Rex is very susceptible to be eaten by just about everybody else who's around who likes to eat meat. And danger isn't limited to the ground. Sometimes it dives out of the sky. Quetzalcoatlus, a 400-pound flying carnivorous reptile, circles, waiting for just the right moment to strike. Quetzalcoatlus would make all other animals in the late Cretaceous stare. With a 42-foot wingspan, they could shut out the sun. One tool that makes this flying reptile so effective is a highly advanced eyeball. Its eyes are built like a hawk's and are able to see with four times the clarity of a human eye. Add to that a retina over four inches wide containing over a billion light receptors. And you've got a reptile that sees the world in high depth. There probably weren't many animals in the Cretaceous that would dare to try to grab a baby Tyrannosaurus rex. Quetzalcoatlus could probably manage it. You see a stork on the Nile today eating a baby crocodile, and you can imagine in your mind Quetzalcoatlus eating a baby Tyrannosaur 65 million years ago. I never know how well Tyrannosaurus could count, but I imagine Mom would be a little bit perplexed when suddenly she was down to five instead of six, and there was no sign of where it had gone. For a baby Tyrannosaurus Rex, danger lurks everywhere, but at least he has a fighting chance. For Sora Poseidon, it's another story altogether. They are born defenseless, and worse, they are born alone. If you want to have intensive parental care, you can only take care of a limited number of offspring. If you want to have lots of offspring, you have to have little or no parental care. And sauropods took that route. From birth, Sora Poseidon is in a race for survival. For every 3,000 hatchlings, only one will make it to adulthood. And to become that one survivor, it must fend for itself for years. For this future behemoth, there's just one rule, grow or die. When we look at sauropod track sites where we have tracks of hundreds of individuals all together, there's a curious thing. These big groups of sauropods always include only the adults and the animals down to about one third of full size. For a juvenile sauropod, growing up alone means growing up in constant danger. 
So think about a juvenile sorpsidin that's the size of a pony or a horse. It has no sharp teeth, no plates, no spikes, no horns, no armor. It's not even very fast. And so what would happen to those juvenile sorpsidins if they were faced by a pack of Deinonychus? Well, they would die. Sora Poseidon navigates a world of hungry predators. When you start off coming, coming out of the egg and you're less than, say, two feet long and, and you're in, an, in a world full of predators that are loving to crunch on you, then you need to get big fairly quickly. The cards seem stacked against this future titan. With odds like these, how will this massive creature survive? Tyrannosaurus rex, a skull almost five feet long, up to 60 serrated teeth, able to cover 15 feet in a single stride. This is one of the biggest carnivorous dinosaurs ever to walk the earth. T-Rex has bone-crushing teeth. They're huge. They have two or three or four times the strength for the body size of any other meat. Yet a T-Rex is born into a world of enemies. Survival even for a king is in no way preordained. Herbivores are not dummies. They'll try to remove the dangerous elements in a preemptive strike. If you're a baby Tyrannosaur, every mega herbivore in the environment wants to crush you. It's as if somehow, inside the tiny brain of a Triceratops, a fearful picture emerges. An image that one day this tiny T-Rex chick will grow into a menacing monster, able to tear this plant eater limb from limb. But perhaps their greatest enemy is a bit more familiar. Probably the greatest danger to a baby T-Rex is another T-Rex, the family from over the hill. Because Darwinian calculus tells you, the predator, to eliminate your competition, other predators, whenever you can. Male lions defend their cubs against rivals who see their offspring as future competition for food and legs. Wouldn't an intelligent predator like T-Rex make the same calculation? Compared to prehistoric plant eaters, its cerebrum, the part of the brain associated with strategy, is huge. So is the cerebellum, which controls muscle function. This is an animal that can plan and execute a devastating attack. It's a behavior hardwired into the brain. If you're trying to increase your evolutionary advantage, the best thing you can do is get more offspring into the future generation. And one of the best ways you can do that is to take better care of the offspring that you produce. Laying eggs nearly depletes a female. She needs nourishment to stay strong. And nourishment means meat. While she searches out her next meal, the male stays behind to guard the nest. Luckily, a Tyrannosaurus rex 